Hello, this is Terry from Fabric Junction in Sturgis, South Dakota. Today I'm going to show you how to bind your pot holder because there's a couple little different twists in it to create a nice hanging loop and a finished binding. Once again, all my binding I do on the machine. I don't do any of it by hand and we want to be able to make a beautiful binding with a nice hanging loop. So if you have followed any one of our potholder videos, now's the time to bind it. You know we have to trim off the edge. So when I do this, I line up either a straight line at the bottom or the top, either, either one, to square my potholder. This one, I actually did my quilting, I just picked a decorative stitch to stitch in the ditch. And it created this beautiful design on the front and a wonderful star on the back. So you can get creative with your, bind, with your quilting, excuse me. To bind, you need a piece about 44 inches long. You will, uh, you can piece it, as you can see I did here or one continuous piece. Go to your iron and press it in half. Once you have it pressed in half, if you have a design in the center, which I have some chili peppers in the center here, so I want to make sure I put my loops so that they are not upside down. So I look at that and I go, okay, if I put the loop in this corner, this is where I want to start. Well, I'm not starting from the front, so I have to hang on to it and flip it over. To remind me, that is where I'm going to start. If you don't have a de any design in it, such as this one here, just as a flower, you can start in any corner. It won't make a difference. So we line it up and like it with our regular binding, unlike our regular binding, we are actually going to start right in the corner and I take just a hair bigger than a quarter inch seam, not much. A lot of times I, I try to uh, use the edge of my foot as a guide. Sometimes I, depends on where my needle is, my needle's to the left, but I want to make sure my foot is on the fabric and, and not kind of talk back and forth because it gets a little hard if you're trying to keep your fabric under your foot as you saw. Anyway, down to the corner. Once again, stopping whatever your seam allowance is, sew off the edge. You can sew towards the corner or just straight off the edge. Now you're looking at the fabric this way you hold this in your right hand, you go up, or I say north, and then you go back south, line it up nice and straight here, and make sure your fabric is lined up nice and straight there. Once that's done, you're ready to sew again. Okay, once you get part way, this is the part that's a little different. Now it's time to turn this. 
like we're getting ready to bind. So fold this forward and put a pin in it and hold it because when we come off the edge we want that to be in place. And then what I do is I take a second pin and just turn it a little further down and slip a pin in. And so then I'm ready to sew once I've come off the edge. So you want it to make sure that it stays flat and that it feeds into your machine without a rolling ups. I go a little bit further, not a lot, and stop. And then check to see that you didn't pick this up and roll it this way. If you did, you'll have to just open it up and then you can sew it from the top to correct that. Measure out from the edge here six inches. And I just fold it back on itself and do a cut. Open it up, fold it down. It's, a, it's up to you how much you want to fold down because we've got enough there to make a nice loop. I'm going to the ironing board. We'll give it a little press to kind of help it stay there. And then we're going to take the fabric and fold it up. Press that. There we go. Oop, got a little crinkle in it. That's okay. Fold it again to cover that raw edge. And again, I stick a little pin in there to hold that in place. Do a little press. Back to sewing. Now, when I start, because we're going to start on our hanging loop, because this end is so bulky, I start a little further down, like more like where the end of my pin is. I fold it, hold it, slip it underneath, and that's where I start. So just fold forward. We're going to cross over. And we just keep folding over. You can see your stitching so you know where to fold to. And I mislaid my tweezers. Looks like I'm going to do the corner with them. It is, or give me a second and I'll grab a pair. Okay. For me, <clears throat> excuse me, I discovered it's easier if I turn the corner using a tweezer to help hang on to it. Because then I can get that nice 45 inch fold. Once I have the needle into the corner, I can turn it. And I go kind of slow on the corners because there's quite a bit of fabric that's all right there. the corner, get my 45, 
look an angle in there. So, and as you can see, my tweezers are back away from my needle. I have them just in the corner kind of securing things. takes off and want to slip on me there just about to have it got to get that little okay got that part I just need that to create that nice miter there it goes Whoop. there we go nice and slow to get it into that corner so it's holding it. Slowly come out of the corner. Now I pull my pin. edge. Okay, now we need to take care of that little section. So I flip it over, start back, but I'm going to, um, the, the one seam I'm going to sew on top of the seam just for about an inch it looks like, right on the edge, and very slowly work my way off. When I get close, I do a couple back stitches and then off the edge. So now we have made our loop. We're sewing shut. Get rid of our threads. From the back side, I just fold it down, line it up so that the tail is straight. That gives me that angle instead of going this way because I want these to hang on point. And back stitch, forward, cut. And done. Got your little string. And there you have bound your pot holder. One of the nice things about pot holders, everybody likes to have them. You can practice making all kinds of blocks. And if you decide you love the block, it's a pot holder. If you hate the block, make it a pot holder. And then you only have to make one. So have fun making pot holders and binding them. Thank you for watching us here at Fabric Junction.